Power Cove Dam was breached on June 5th, 2023 at around 2.50 in the morning local time. I believe that a structural collapse, not an explosion, caused this breach, and I'm going to go through this step by step and explain why. Couple things to start. This does not mean that Russia isn't responsible. It's kind of like Colin Powell's Pottery Barn rule. If you break it, you buy it. When you're occupying a territory, if incompetence or neglect causes a natural disaster, it's no different than if you planted a bomb. Second, I want to thank my paid Substack subscribers for funding this. I spent about $1,500 on satellite footage. If you're a paid Substack member and you want to see the raw satellite footage or view the slides I'm going to show, all of it's available in a really large zip file in the Substack article. It's about 600 megabytes. Let's talk about the Harkova Dam and its associated hydroelectric station for a moment. Dams are wonders of civilization. They can reroute water for irrigation and drinking. They can control flooding and provide power. It seems like once humans started building vertically for shelter, we then started building horizontally to move water around. In fact, the oldest known dam is actually older than the oldest known bridge. Now, I need to talk about type of dams and how they work, but keep in mind, I may be an engineer, but I am a software engineer. I can barely build a sandwich. So I reached out to a few engineers, hydrologists, geologists, and even a few seismologists to help write the story. If you want a better example about dams, check out the Practical Engineering channel. Grady's a real engineer, and he's much better at this stuff than I. That being said, there's two basic types of dams, earth-fill dams and gravity dams. Now, there's many different subtypes of each, but it looks like the hark of a dam is a combination of earthen dam and concrete dam. Work started on the dam in 1950, and it was completed in 1956 with the intention of creating power and reducing flooding along the Dnieper River. You see this approach here? This is man-made. This is part of the dam structure. It's the earthen part. This part here is the concrete part. On the upstream side, we have the Dnieper River Reservoir. On the downstream side is the Dnieper River. These things here are called sluice gates, which are opened and closed by gantry cranes that move along a track at the crest, or top, of the dam. Think of sluice gates as a valve, which allow the dam's spillway to do its job. The spillway is a safety feature that allows water to escape from the reservoir if the water level of the dam gets too high, but I'll get to that in a sec. This here is the powerhouse. It is six generators based on the discharge downstream outlets. Now, this is the absolute basics on how a hydroelectric dam works. Water comes through an intake, it travels through a penstock, which moves pressurized water through a turbine. The turbine spins a generator, and the generator creates money! And then the water is discharged downstream. Now, in this particular dam, it looks like the powerhouse is part of the dam itself. Put a pin in that, it's going to be important later. Now, there's a couple of ways a dam can fail. Piping, or internal erosion, is one type. This is where water kind of seeps into the dam itself. Now, all dams leak. That isn't that big of a deal over the short term. I don't think this dam collapse was a piping issue. The next is liquefaction. Think of what happens during an earthquake when the ground essentially becomes a liquid. Well, dams can be damaged in earthquakes, but that part of Europe isn't particularly geologically active. Now, liquefaction can happen when water seeps under the dam. That can collapse the structure. Put a pin in that as well. Slope failures, spillway failures, and hydroelectric failures are three other methods of failure. Slope failures happen when the driving force, such as gravity, overcomes the strength of the structure. Spillway failures happen when the spillway is insufficient to carry away excess water, or they're just not maintained properly. And turbine or hydroelectric failures happen when a turbine vibrates itself apart. Finally, we have overtopping, and this is where things get interesting. Gravity dams are held in place by gravity. Their mass helps keep them where they should be. But remember, all of that water is pushing on the dam. Now, a dam might be designed to maintain a certain water level inside the reservoir, and if it gets too high, just open up the spillways. But if the water overtops the dam, that's bad. In fact, in an earth-filled dam, the water will erode the top of the dam, and it only gets worse as more water carries away more soil. But in a gravity dam, once the driving force of the water 
overcomes that force of gravity? Well, that's how some dams collapse, although some are designed with stand over topping. Now, let's take a look at the satellite footage that I purchased. This is what the dam looked like on November 10th, 2022. This is the Ukrainian side, this is the Russian side. You can even see defensive positions. Note the positions of the cranes and that this one spillway is open. Look at the turbulent water ejected by the spillway. I want you to remember what turbulent water looks like. Now, typically you don't just open one spillway unless there's sediment upstream and you're just trying to get rid of that sediment. In fact, sediment is such a pain for dam operators that these structures called groins are built to prevent sediment from piling up near the dam. By March 3rd, someone has destroyed the bridge section on the Ukrainian side. From what I understand, Russian forces dropped the north side of the bridge decking to prevent Ukrainian crossing sometime around November 12th. In fact, that video that people keep emailing around claiming it to be the destruction of the dam currently is actually from that controlled demolition. I'm not sure if the spillways were destroyed in that controlled demolition or just the roadway. By March 3rd, there is no more turbulent water on the Ukrainian side, but we see a brown stain start to develop on this roadway. I'm not sure what this brown stain is, but it wasn't there in November. As you can see, the gantry cranes have moved, and now at least one spillway closest to the Russian side is releasing turbulent water. Now, while all this is going on, I want to talk about the water levels in the Dnieper River Reservoir. It seems like the water levels hover around 16 meters. It got as low as 14 meters in February. And then it starts climbing again. Note, you want levels to be lower in winter because you have to be prepared for the spring snow melt. Now, people have speculated that Russia intentionally lowered the water so they could put explosives on the upstream side, but I don't believe that's true. Remember how I said, now in this particular dam, it looks like the powerhouse is part of the dam itself. Put a pin in that, it's going to be important later. It's later now. Russia would never have to lower the water level to put explosives on the dam. They already have access to the plant's greatest weak point, the powerhouse. This is where the pipes come in, and don't forget that explosives work better when they are confined. Place explosives in the powerhouse, and the river will do the rest of the work. But I'm not sure this is the result of explosives. If we move forward to June 1st, we see that again, that right spillway has turbulent water. Now, I don't have a picture of every single day between March 3rd and June 1st. I just don't have the money to buy all that footage. But I want to show you what happens on June 2nd. The road bridge is gone. Now, there is a phenomenon called hydrodynamic scour. Essentially, fast-flowing water will dig out a hole in front of an obstruction. So, at this point, I'm kind of wondering if constantly running that southernmost spillway created a scour hole that collapsed the roadway and kept moving back and back and back toward the dam, undermining the dam. Also note that turbulent water is all over the dam. This is overtopping. This dam is overtopping. It's doing something that no dam should be doing. So now there might be a scour hole forming below the dam and the force of water overtopping the dam above. By June 6th, the dam breaks, and it appears to have broken right where that scour hole may have formed. And here's what remains of the powerhouse. So why would Russia constantly run the southernmost spillways? Well, I'll venture to guess that these gantry cranes that lift and lower the spillway gates are manned. This part of the Dnieper River is only about 800 meters across. I could teach an NPR reporter to hit a man-sized target out at 800 meters with an optic and a rifle I bought at Walmart. So you can imagine what a juicy target it makes for a trained sniper, whether you're Russian or Ukrainian. You want to expose yourself in a giant gantry crane? So I believe that Russia may have been using the southernmost spillway because they didn't want to approach close to Ukrainian territory and risk getting shot. Now, regarding whether Russia was using an explosive, well, I figure something like that. If they used an explosive, it would take a lot of explosive power to blow up a dam. So I, I figured that it would end up on seismometers, and there are quite a few in Europe. So I reached out to Stanford University, home of the best geology and seismology professors in the country. And I spoke with Professor Eric Dunn, who told me that if an explosive was used, the seismic waves could travel hundreds of kilometers, but it would have to be a big explosion. Now, supposedly this image is of a seismic monitoring station in Norway, 
but it's impossible to determine this because there's no amplitude scale, there's no access to the raw data of both the vertical and horizontal waves. But if there was seismic data, the explosion and subsequent collapse should come in as two different kinds of waves. And based on the satellite footage, I think it's pretty obvious that the failure occurred over the course of several days. Let's talk about how this affects the war. Could Russia have intentionally destroyed the dam to thwart a river crossing near Kherson? Maybe, but it's hard enough to perform a regular assault. By making it wider, you're not actually giving your adversary any sort of disadvantage. They're already at a disadvantage trying to cross that large river. You don't give them a greater disadvantage by making the river quarter mile wider. I mean, Amphibious operations are so hard that America has an entire branch just devoted to amphibious warfare. There's a reason we don't call them Army Junior. So, crossing the Dnieper River was already hard and unlikely to have been part of an operation in the first place, so blowing the dam to make something that's hard even harder doesn't seem like it's the juice is worth the squeeze there. So, flooding the Dnieper River doesn't gain Russia any strategic advantage. I mean, if you look at these pictures before and after the 6th, Russian trenches along the Dnieper River got wiped out. There's also been talk that the collapse of the dam also destroyed drinking water for Crimea. This is somewhat true. Uh, Crimea doesn't have a lot of good water sources, and this canal right here is above the dam. It provides drinking water and irrigation to a province that's roughly the size of Massachusetts. Uh, this is called the North Crimea Canal, and it was built roughly around the same time that the dam was built. With the water levels in the reservoir lower once the flood subsides, it's going to be harder to move water because water flows from high to low. Now, it could also be that Russia caused this to create a humanitarian catastrophe to draw Ukraine's attention away from the counteroffensive in what's looking like is going to be Zaporizhia. Maybe. There is a precedent for this. In 1991, during the first Gulf War, Saddam Hussein caused an oil spill in a sort of environmental terrorism attempt that was designed to distract the coalition and prevent Marines from landing in Kuwait during Operation Desert Storm. Now, there are other people who said that Ukraine blew up their own dam and blamed Russia by floating a bomb downstream or with a special forces team. And they bring up that movie, The Dam Busters. But that doesn't explain why the roadway collapsed. And I also think you would need a couple thousand pounds of explosives even in the turbine room, and no special forces team is bringing that in on their backs. So based on the evidence, I think the dam collapsed slowly over time, and I believe this is just negligence and incompetence. It could be as simple as competent Ukrainian operators were fired from the dam, or they were killed, or they fled. And cronies who have pointed by Russia who really didn't know how to operate the plant were installed in their place. But like I said at the beginning, explosion or not, Russia owns this. There are a number of people I'd like to thank for assisting me in proofreading and fact-checking this video. Civil engineer Jan Krajshevich, uh, civil engineer MSC Thomas Buxbaum, uh, geotechnical engineer Alexander McKenney, Andrew Maddox, Matt Taylor, Chartered Civil Engineer from Melbourne, and Professor Eric Dunham of Stanford University. Uh, I'd also like to thank a few people from the United States Air Force who want to remain anonymous and to explain the moral and ethical issue in dealing with destroying dams. And if you'd like to support the channel and independent journalism, join my Substack, buy a t-shirt from Bunker Branding, or get a cameo greeting for the loved one in your life who enjoys the channel. And thank you so much for watching.